Welcome back to our video tutorial series on developing with Pyral. In this tutorial, we'll have a closer look at the Pyral CLI. As you already know, the Pyral CLI comes with two commands called Pyral, which is responsible for handling Pyral instances, and Pilot, which is responsible for handling pilots. Both are coming from one command, which is the pyral build command, or pb in short. In here you'll see the real commands, for instance, a pyral debug command would yield pb debug pyral. Now, in addition to the global usage of the pyral CLI, you can also just use our npm initializers. For instance, in our tutorial, we've so far built an application shell and a pilot. If we want to scaffold another pilot, we can also use the npm initializer called with npm init. So let's run the npm initializer. This will get a fresh instance of the Pyral CLI just for the initializer. In general, we recommend using local versions of the Pyral CLI. This has the big advantage that you can always couple the right version of your CLI to your pilot or your application shell. Also, CI CD systems will get the Pyral CLI upon pushing. The initializer runs in an interactive mode, so we will see a short survey when the download has completed. We need to specify the right path. So we just go and use the 1.1.0 version in the current directory using the default npm registry and we also leave the rest as is. Now the next thing I want to show in this tutorial is how we can extend the piracy lie. In general it makes sense that the piracy lie is extended via external packages. Let's now add a command to the piracy lie that actually extends our set of commands with a dependency command. For this, we use VS Code. But before we start, let's just look how pilot help looks. So here we see debug, build, pack, publish, new, upgrade, and validate. And we now want to add a new command called dependencies. So we do the following. Let's just add a folder. Let's call it Pyral CLI my plugin. Let's add a package JSON. And let's add an index.js. Already goes to index.js. Now in here all we do is that we create a new function and export that. Now, we add a new command. And this command will be our dependencies pilot. And we already get a little bit of completion here. So we can also add some aliases. Let's say depths should work here. Let's give it a description. And let's specify that we don't have any arguments yet. Of course, we may want to add some flags. Let's leave it out for the moment. But really importantly, 
let's run our command and all that we do here is uh, that we log this is my command let's see if that works so far so here you see the pilot dependencies are already added which means I can just use it and see this is my awesome command. Now, of course, we may want to have some kind of implementation here. No dependencies yet. Then we would immediately see these commands. All right. So far so good. So this is how we can write plugins. We can of course also add a couple of flags here. For this, please have a look at the specification of YAX. There's some very good documentation out there. Um, so what we could for instance do is we could say there's a Boolean and you could say only shared. And uh, we can have a description for the Boolean. And finally, um, a default value, maybe two. And we can use that also in the given arcs. Let's specify the help. And let's see that we already get here as an option only shared. And we can already use this option. And we see was set to true. And in default mode, it was set to false. All right. There are a couple of other things we can do. For instance, validations. Um, we can always run pilot validate and this will actually run a couple of checks. It will tell us in this case, yeah, my app seems to be outdated, expected is zero, one, zero. And the reason for that is simple. Um, by default, this checks against the NPM feed and apparently there is already a my app out there. So, which is in version 010, and we can easily verify that when we go to npmjs org and just search for my app. We see it's there in version 010. All right, so this validation can be helpful if we work against a remote feed, what should be the case in local development, it's just a warning and we should ignore it. But we could of course add our own validations too. And we can even control the validations, but not within the pilot. They actually need to come from the Pyrel instance. How exactly you do that? You see that in our written tutorial. I hope you gained a little bit of insights in this one. In the next tutorial, we'll have a look at best practices for writing pilots.